they say, well, in order for this test to be accurate, you have to eat everything in there, die 10,000 deaths, and then maybe you'll get accurate data. And I don't understand that because it's not true. Today, we have a panel for you. We have some top functional medicine physicians and nutritionists, and we're going to be blowing the lid wide open on food sensitivities. Are they legit related with certain symptoms, certain diagnosis? Are they real? Here we go, everybody. So I want to have give people a behind the scenes of like really what, what is in our experience, what got us here? I would love to first ask, in your training to become a functional nutritionist or doctor, what do you feel like it has been for diagnosing and treating people's food sensitivities accurately? Jason? Yeah, I can speak to that. I can tell you that, you know, having gone through two core, you know, physician level programs and having spent a couple of decades here, um, there is no training in the core program. There is right. literally no training. Providers are left on their own to figure it out. A lot of that figuring it out is just trying to guess what labs work and what they mean. Yeah. Um, some of the training that you, most of the training that you get is from like a lab rep and it's, and they're not really trained even in how to interpret the labs. I mean, there's, there's so many problems. Again, providers are not prepared to even take a look at this. From a nutritionist mm -hmm. standpoint, Kathy, and then Allie, like, what do you guys think? You came from different programs for functional nutrition training. How has, is your training like? Uh, to be honest, same thing. We didn't get any training. And in fact, um, I wouldn't, I refuse to bring in any kind of food sensitivity training into my practice uh, because anyone that would show up with a food sensitivity um, uh, test and come see me, it was, it was like lit, lit up like a Christmas tree. I could, I didn't even know where to start with them. And so I just assumed that they were not real. I didn't find them accurate. Well, let me clear that, clarify that. It's not that you thought that their food reactions weren't real or that their food sensitivities or allergies weren't real. It's just that you thought the results from those tests were not real because they were unreliable. Yeah, yeah. correct. They were okay. unreliable and they would have to be off every single food. <laughs> this is the standard of care, folks. And what about you, Allie? Yeah, well, I was trained in a lot of different diets and a lot of different elimination diets. Mm -hmm. And so that was a, a place to start. And also that was a place where it caused a lot of agony for clients, a lot of misery for clients. And that's not my objective when I'm working with somebody is to see how miserable I can get them in service of their healing. That's not the way it needs to be. That's not the functional way. Mm -hmm. And then of course, you know, Dr. Jason talked about this, all of the different labs. I attended so many different trainings from labs and they're all right. Right. And so it's really confusing if everybody's saying, no, this is the one, no, this is the one, no, this is the one. And you're learning from the actual lab. So there's bias there. And so it's like, how are you supposed to discern where we're supposed, what's the accurate information? I don't know. Well, this is interesting because right before we went on live, you mentioned that one of the most common thing you uh, lab companies that you train with, I'm not, we're going to not name the brand. It starts with the letter A. <laughs> um, and I have had a lot of experiences with people coming to me with those tests and even having tried many of my clients early on with that test. Um, what was your experience with this most popular test, Allie? A lot of overwhelm, a lot of, everything. I have to get rid of everything. everything. And it's like, yes, I no. think that we do. No. And it's not true. And it's not true. And that's so it's disappointing and also freeing. Actually, when I learned about the food mapping system and learned all of all of the steps and all of the, I mean, wow, is that freeing for people to realize this was completely inaccurate and you were suffering for no reason. Sorry. Let's bring some food back. <laughs> Dr. J, what was your experience with that test and other companies that you've used in your practice before? Uh, like Ali was saying, you get the results back and they're just completely, you know, nobody can eat anything. Um, and then you're left with you know, a whole bunch of different types of testing that's out there, whether it's IgG, Ig, IgA, Ig, you know, E. And then you have all these different companies that are just promoting that their version of it is the most accurate version. And the reality is most of those companies are startup companies. They don't have a lot of lab data. They don't have good quality results. They can't they don't have good reproducibility. Yeah. And so when you start looking at, you know, that, it, it, it really narrows it down to what they're a handful um, of a couple of companies out of hundreds that are out there that are even worth looking at. Well, here's the interesting thing. And I agree with you. I tested 42 different test companies tests on, you know, and I've at this point done over 10,000 of these tests on different clients. 
Um, and I myself and many people have been like guinea pigs tried this brand and compared them. And there is no, com like you can't compare, like they're completely opposite or different and confusing. And here's another interesting thing. Even when you, there is, let's say to me, like, let's say there's one or two companies that are doing good testing. Um, there's a science. I'm going to explain to you guys the science of what makes a good test is that a big part of their, um, the thing is it's called antigen source is where are they sourcing that allergen from? And what I learned about how these companies, most 99% of these companies are sourcing the antigen source. It is so inaccurate. No wonder we get results where people are really overcalled. Now, here's another experience I have. We do run the best test. We do run a test that over the years I have found is the most reliable. And even utilizing the tests that we do, the interesting thing is doctors are being trained by the reps from these lab companies. The lab company for the tests that we use don't know what we know at all. And the reason is they don't, they're not delivering care. They're not clinicians. They're laboratory salespeople, right? Who are not delivering care and seeing the patterns that I've seen in, in for this particular lab company that we've worked with on the testing that we currently are doing, I've done over 6,000 of these. And so I see patterns that reveal some really hidden clues. Hi, I'm Meg UMD, and I'm a functional and holistic medicine physician and the creator of the Transform and Transform Protocol. If you're interested in learning what are the root causes of all chronic disease, go ahead and click the link in the description where I have a power pack 30 minute training that goes over what are the five pillars of Transform. Go ahead, click the link, and I'll see you in that training. And this is a question I'm going to ask you guys, which is as you guys have all been certified and trained in the food mapping system, and you guys are working with clients on this. What are some clues that you've learned from our testing that you're sharing with clients that was never taught to you before? I think, you know, first of all, to jump in there, um, I think that I just want to talk about the training just for one more second. The training is literally if someone has a severe reaction or sometimes a moderate or borderline, avoid that food. And that's as deep as that training goes. There is no further training at all. So mm -hmm. uh, I just want to say that. I think that one of the biggest pieces that's jumped out at me, um, having worked with you know, Dr. Maggie and the Transform team is that it really is a, a it's a complex system. It involves yeah. digestion and histamines and um, regulation and, you know, the microbiome and, and, and a whole host of things that are going on in addition to just what's the food that you're sensitive to or reactive to. Yeah. And that's something that, that's really hit me differently than I've ever been taught anywhere else at all with all my training. Yeah. Kathy? Yeah. So the other thing that I wanted to add too, which you, you didn't really touch on is the education piece because yeah. there is so much education and background information that we tell our patients and our clients um, that, that is not readily available. For instance, I wanted to just come back to like something that Ali said, oftentimes uh, people will say, oh, well, is almonds showing up because I'm eating a lot of it, right? They, no. they think that because they're eating a lot of it, it's showing up on the test. Well, I don't know, because, you know, there's other things like koala nuts and ginkgo nuts that people react to that they are like, I've never even, I don't even know what a ginkgo nut is. I don't know what a koala nut is. I have never seen this before. And we see this all the time. People react to foods they've never, ever ingested. Before Dr. J jumps in, I'm going to tell you guys something, right? So I hear doctors and it irritates me where they tell patients the wrong information, even pre-test. They say, well, in order for this test to be accurate, you have to eat everything in there, die 10,000 deaths, and then maybe you'll get accurate data. And I don't understand that because it's not true. And Kathy's bringing that point up because we see people who've never eaten a chestnut in their life and they have a chestnut reaction that is 100% real. So the accuracy of the testing that we do is so important. And we also don't tell people erroneous BS to tell you to eat everything so that you sick and die 10 times before you actually get results. That is not accurate information that is needed before someone get accurate testing results. I was just going to go on the other side of that coin too. I mean, with the argument, you know, oh, if you eat a lot of it, it's going to show up as positive. We've ran thousands of tests where people eat a lot of a certain amount of food and it doesn't show up as positive. You know, so it's it's not like a one-to-one -one there. You know, I mean, people are reactive or they're not reactive. It uh, really doesn't have to do with the amount that they're consuming. Ellie, go for it. Well, I was just going to say, and because alongside of this, we're working on healing the gut. 
if we weren't healing the gut, then you are right to develop more sensitivities. But where it's it, it they go hand in hand. It's not you get a test and okay, here you go. Bye. Good luck. Okay. This is boom. Here, um, Terry from YouTube is bringing up an interesting thing. Most testing suck. You're right. Sucks. I like S-U-X with an X and an exclamation mark. You're right, Terry. Um, I tested negative of Epstein-Barr, just had massive shingles outbreak, right? So she's acknowledging that most testing are very inaccurate, but she's also bringing in the whole idea around infection and its impact on people's um, intestinal lining cells. So I want to point out something, which is that we are in an environment where most of us have some infection in our gut. And unfortunately, what happens is if you have an infection in your gut, you've all heard the term leaky gut, which means that a lot of people, the barrier between their gut and their blood lining and their blood flow is compromised. So as a result, what can happen is this whole porous barrier can cause a lot of food and, and, and infectious agents to go in the bloodstream that doesn't really belong there. So what has happened as a result of that is that this will cause a lot of things that don't belong in the blood to show up positive on these tests, call, causing uh, everything to light up in false positives. So if a doctor or a functional medicine provider do, is doing the test and they don't understand how to accurately interpret or review the results that is a sign of someone with leaky gut, which is a lot of overcalls, then you're going to still get the same bad advice. Oh, everything here is real. You should eliminate 90% of your diet, which is absolutely asinine, not true. So I love the fact that I'm training you guys on how to understand that some of these people with leaky gut pictures where everything is showing up, it's not true. And then what's real? What's not? Like, that's the thing that I think having done 6,000 of these, I can really say, hey, this is how you tell the difference between the two. This is how you give someone really accurate, actionable um, steps that are clear based on their data. That And yet out there, they just say it's all real. It's all real. It's all real. And you make people super sick, eliminating 90% of food on the planet. To learn more about the food mapping system and my food mapping masterclass, click the link above or below this video.